by Maldito Angel. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, a United Nations investigator has said the United States should return some land to Native American tribes, including South Dakota's Black Hills, which is home to the famous Mount Rushmore Monument. In recent weeks, James Anaya, the U.N. Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, conducted the U.N.'s first-ever investigation into the plight of Native Americans living in the United States. Anaya has called on the United States to return some land stolen from Native American tribes. Anaya said such a move would be a step toward addressing systemic discrimination against Native Americans that continues to this day. There are approximately 2.7 million Native Americans living in federally recognized tribal areas in the United States. We go now to Tucson, Arizona, to speak with James Anaya, the U.N. Special Rapporteur, who recently concluded his tour across the United States. He is writing a report on his findings. He's also professor of human rights at the University of Arizona College of Law. Uh, professor Anaya, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you talk about what you found and what you are calling for? Well. First of all, good morning. It's good to be on the program. Uh, what I found are vibrant uh, communities, indigenous communities throughout the country that are striving to survive as distinct peoples with their cultures intact, transmit those cultures to future generations. But they face a, a number of challenges. Uh, the indigenous peoples of this country, the Native Americans, American Indians, Alaska Natives, uh, Native Hawaiians, um, suffer from poverty, uh, poor health conditions. Uh, lack of attainment of formal education, social ills, at rates uh, far that, that, ex that far exceed uh, those of other segments of the American population. And uh, these uh, conditions are related to a, a history of wrongs that they have suffered that uh, most Americans are, are familiar with. Um, what I've called for are for the uh, initiatives that are in place. Uh, to be strengthened, the initiatives uh, that have been promoted by the federal government uh, through various agencies uh, that are being promoted by the White House itself, uh, that are grounded in some pieces of legislation, that these be strengthened, and that there be uh, more concerted moves towards re real reconciliation uh, with uh, the country's indigenous peoples. And, and as part of those initiatives, what I've said is that uh, the restoration of lands should be put on the table, as indeed it, it already is. Um, what we've seen recently are uh, efforts by the federal government to uh, return to indigenous peoples uh, control over certain areas. For example, most recently, an area in, uh, in South Dakota that has been under the administration of the National Park Service, an area that was taken over from Native Americans during World War II for a military gunnery. Um, and, and really was an ongoing part of dispossession of land uh, from Native Americans. And quite recently, there's been an agreement between the Department of Interior and the Oglala Sioux Tribe uh, to establish what would be an Oglala National uh, Park, in essence, an Oglala-run national park. And, and so that kind of initiative, restoring to indigenous peoples control over lands that are important to them, that were wrongfully uh, taken from them, uh, would be the kind of reconciliation process that, that uh, the, the federal government itself uh, and Congress itself has says need to take place. So what I've called for is the strengthening of these kind of initiatives. Well, uh, James and I, are the, as you say, the horrific record of the United States in terms of constantly making treaties and breaking them and taking uh, Native lands is, is, uh, is part of the, uh, the worst aspects of American history. But the headline-grabbing part of your report is this issue of uh, Mount Rushmore and the Black Hills. Could you talk about the particularities of that case and why you think that, r that rises to the point that should actually be considered for the government to return that, uh, that particular land? land? I, I'm not sure why that has uh, grabbed the headline so much. I simply, in a press conference in Washington when I concluded my visit, uh, referred to the Black Hills as an example of an unsettled claim. Uh, the Black Hills were taken illegally uh, from the Lakota people, and that was acknowledged by the United States the Supreme Court itself. Uh, compensation was offered, but the, uh, uh, the Lakota people uh, have refused to take the money because of the so the significance that the Black Hills hold for them. And uh, what I've said is that, that that issue should be addressed and that ways should be explored by which control or uh, a reconnection, uh, some kind of restoration should occur, could occur by which the Lako Lakota people could, could, could have a greater access to the Black Hills, uh, be more present there. Uh, and, and that place 
represent again uh, a part of the people, uh, the Lakota people, as opposed to simply representing uh, their defeat uh, and 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 the, and the negative side of history. Now, I haven't said anything about Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore could stay under federal control, or or it could be part of a, a joint management between the federal government and uh, the Lakota people. There are all kinds of, of possibilities. Uh, I've simply said that this matter needs to be looked at as part of uh, the reconciliation that Congress itself says need to, needs to take place. Can you give examples of where land was given back? Well, I, I've given one the, that's occurring as uh, right now, and, or that where initiatives are in place to, to do just that, uh, and that is the the restoration to tr tribal control uh, of uh, a national park in South Dakota, national the Badlands National Park, part part of that park uh, that uh, was taken, as I said earlier, for a gunnery uh, during World War II. The initiative to return that to tribal control that's ongoing and isn't completed, but the Interior Department has has announced uh, an agreement. Uh, between the the government and the Oglala Sioux tribe uh, to move forward with, with that. James, uh, James another and Another example is... The, go ahead. Yeah, another example is the return of the sacred Blue Lake to Taos Pueblo in, in 1970, uh, the, an area that uh, was taken from them, that was, uh, remain, was and remained and still is uh, sacred to them and, and uh, part of their identity and culture. Uh, that area of, of this sacred place was... Uh, return to them. Uh, then there's uh, another example of the uh, in, uh, for the the, the Timba Shoshone tribe uh, in the Death Valley area of South, of, uh, of California and Nevada, uh, lands that were within that previously were within the national park uh, of that area, that the Death Valley area, uh, were returned and restored to uh, the Timba Shoshone people. Um, these are these are practical steps. That can be taken that, that are not to the detriment of any any American or really are, are are to the advantage of all of America because they promote that kind of reconciliation that needs to take place and that is just and, and James and I as you were going around the country uh, what kind of cooperation did you receive either from federal agencies or from Congress in terms of your investigation I'm sorry, I missed that. The beer piece said, said a little bit. Uh, as you were going around the country, what kind of cooperation or lack of cooperation did you get from federal agencies or members of Congress? Uh, the, the cooperation from the federal government was uh, was superb, really. Um, in fact, to do this kind of uh, exercise, this kind of mission, as we call them, uh, I require, I need the, the consent and cooperation of a, of a country. I cannot simply go into a country and engage in an examination of issues concerning indigenous peoples without that consent. And, and ideally, I need the, the cooperation. And I, I did receive the cooperation from, from the administration. I met with all the, the federal agencies that I asked to meet, with which I asked to meet. And uh, uh, I also met, was able to meet, meet with uh, some state officials uh, as well. Members of Congress? No, I wasn't able to meet uh, with members of Congress. I, I did request to meet with members of Congress, but for some reason that, um, that didn't happen. Now, this was the first such inquiry, fact-finding mission like this in U.S. history. Is this right? Why now? Well, excuse me, there's something wrong with this earpiece. Now, um, the U.S. has endorsed the U.N. Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Um, that is a declaration by the, the U.N. G uh, General Assembly uh, affirming the rights of indigenous peoples to self-determination, to their lands and resources, to maintain their culture, uh, to redress for historical wrongs. Uh, and that uh, endorsement by the United States, which reversed the previous position uh, of the United States, uh, uh, was, was an important uh, point, I think, of engagement by the United States with the international community over these issues. Uh, and so I approached the United States about a possibility of a visit, of coming uh, to the United States and going throughout the country to examine conditions. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the government welcomed uh, that, this initiative. And, uh, uh, and so my hope is that this will, will, will be an exercise that will help uh, promote those kinds of initiatives that, that need to be taken that, and to a significant extent are being taken to address the concerns of indigenous peoples. But we like I said, uh, more needs to be done.